Hello, listeners. As an enhancement to your listening experience, I am now going to present these archive episodes unedited in their entirety, which includes all of my afterthoughts. So, continue listening after the outro music if you want to hear what I thought of the episode. And if you are enjoying the podcast, please support it by going to the homepage spacerockethistory.com and clicking on the orange donate button or the Patreon link. And now I can also accept Zelle and Venmo. Just use my email address, spacerockethistory at gmail.com. Thanks. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. In God's speed, John Glenn. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. I feel uh, Okay, I'm out. How does it feel for the United States to be the new record holder? At last, huh? So in that baby light, there's no doubt about it. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Houston, uh... Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Hello and welcome. This is Michael Annis, and you're listening to episode 246 of the Space Rocket History Podcast. And now, Apollo 12, Pinpoint Landing, Part 2, right down the middle of the road. We stopped last week about midway through the landing of Lunar Module Intrepid. Okay, speed 7 minutes. 1153 means you're about 33 per second. Uh, wait a minute, let's, let's go ahead and go for 730. Okay, we're out of 19,000 feet. I got some kind of a horizon out there. I got some craters too, but I don't know where I am yet. 730. The smoke over the numbers is 730. Okay, 730, 1153. Not too bad. Minus 135, we're descending a little faster than normal, and we're a little bit low. Conrad called out, we're at 19,000 feet. He leaned forward and peered through the bottom corner of his window, straining to spot that snowman pattern of craters, saying, I got some kind of a rising out there. I got some craters too, but I don't know where I am yet. Now, at 18,000 feet above the lunar surface, dropping 20 feet per second, separation was nominal, every move right on program. Although the computer was humming right alongside him, it was Pete Conrad bringing this ship down. At this point on Apollo 11, Armstrong was calmly minding his own business and letting the computer handle most of the descent. But then, he had to take over because he was coming into an unlandable field of boulders. Armstrong's heart was racing at nearly 160 beats per minute. He found a spot, and he set her down, like a pilot with only seconds of fuel left. There had been none of that computer glitch monkey business today with Apollo 12. Pete was on the stick the whole way down, aiming right for what appeared to be the planned landing site. He was hoping Surveyor was there, but he sure couldn't see it yet. Armstrong was a heck of a pilot and a good guy. He saved the lunar module and his and Aldrin's life by setting her down like he did. The first human to set foot on another world, he was every bit the hero the world made him out to be and deserved every Corvette or free lunch or free house the taxpaying public would buy for him for life. Pete Conrad had no desire to try to better Neil or to do something that he hadn't done on his own flight. But all pilots want to nail their landing, whether it's from Paoli Field to Westchester or Cape Canaveral to the Ocean of Storms. Starting from Pad 39A, a quarter million miles away at the Cape, Pete wanted nothing more than to bring her in and drill the target like an F-4 Phantom hitting the number three wire on the carrier. Good luck. Hey, good. 160 feet a second, huh? Okay. 23. We'll be there in a minute. Number. Hammer's running. Intrepid Houston, you're looking good at eight. Okay, 
Passing 12,000 feet. According to our tape meter, Houston. Roger. Spring loaded to go grab that right there. You're out of 10,000 feet. Hook up your lanyard. Okay. Eight minutes being radioed. Passing 12,000 feet, according to our tape meter, Houston. Spring loaded to go grab that surveyor. Standing by for pitch over, Conrad said, punching the computer's proceed button. At 8 minutes and 38 seconds, right on schedule at 7,000 feet, Intrepid pitched forward for final descent, and a widescreen panorama of the ocean of storms swung upward into Conrad's view. He had no idea what he was looking at. There were so many craters, thousands of them, maybe tens of thousands. Each brilliantly illuminated a sea of holes and shadows. Where was the snowman? The computer had given him a number to use in sighting through his window to see where they were headed. Now he used it. Suddenly, he could see the snowman far in the distance, right where they were heading. Conrad was stunned to realize that if he didn't touch the controls, they would land in the center of the surveyor crater. Mission Control's aim had been perfect, and Conrad could not contain himself. Hey, there it is, there it is, son of a gun, right down the middle of the road. Even as Bean tried to read him LPD angles, Conrad was too excited to listen. Look out there, I can't believe it, fantastic. But the targeting was almost too good. Conrad was not about to land in the middle of the surveyor crater. As the computer flew intrepid down, Conrad told it to shift the aim point short and to the right of the crater. He would give Pete's parking lot a try, after all. He heard Jerry Carr's voice. Intrepid Houston, go for landing. In a buy for P-64. Okay. I'm trying to cheat and look out there. I think I see my crater. Hey, baby. I'm not sure. Coming through seven. Look at P-64, Pete. P-64. That's it, there's LPD. Roger, copy P-64. Hey, there it is. There it is. Son of a gun, right down the middle of the road. Outstanding, 42 degrees, Pete. Hey, it's sighted right from the center of the crater. Look out there. I can't believe it. Amazing. Fantastic. 42 degrees, Pete. Just keep talking. Light it in. 42, we're passing 3,500. Coming down at about 99 feet a second. You're looking good. Got 15% fuel. I'll reset my watch. Okay, Houston, go for landing. Over one. I just want LPD to the right a little. Roger, okay, go. Roger. Bean could barely take his mind off the job to answer Conrad's elation with his own, saying, Amazing! He allowed himself only a quick glance out the window, then forced his attention back to the gauges. Conrad was depending on him to read all crucial information from Intrepid's computer. We're passing 3,500, Bean said, coming down at 99 feet per second. You're looking good. 15% fuel remaining. A thousand feet above the moon, Bean stole another glance out of his window and saw a bright field of craters, with the surveyor crater as big as life, directly ahead. They were coming in at a great speed. Up to now, the landing had seemed like a simulation, but this was almost more than he could stand to look at. It was amazing, even frightening. Quickly, Bean turned his gaze back to the instruments. His voice was calm as he told Conrad, Looks good out there, babe. Looks good. But Pete's parking lot did not look very good to Conrad. It looked more like Pete's battlefield. Again, Conrad shifted the landing point, this time further down range. 40 degrees, LPD, Pete. 40 That's degrees. so fantastic, I can't believe it. You're at 2,000 feet. How far? The boys on the ground do okay. 1,800 feet up, 39 degrees. You got 94 seconds of LP, LPD time left. Okay, I want to move forward a little bit. 38. 38 degrees. 36 degrees. You're 1,200 feet, Pete. Okay, 1,000 feet coming down at 30. You're looking good. You got 14% fuel. At 900 feet above the moon, Bean took another glance outside and saw the ocean of storms rushing toward him. Get your head back in the cockpit and help Pete, he told himself. It'll be just like the simulator. Now descending past 600 feet, Conrad was still hunting for a new landing spot. 
You're at 530 feet, Pete, called Bean. You're all right. But they were still coming in like a bullet. Now, with a flick of his hand controller, Conrad took control again and hoped something better lay up ahead. Conrad wanted time to slow down and look for a landing spot, and he could afford to. They were fat on fuel. 33 degrees. Degrees, 600 feet. Antenna's okay. Thanks. 35 degrees, 530 feet. 530, 471. You are all right. 426. I got it. 400. As Intrepid descended through 400 feet, Conrad pitched the craft back to kill their forward speed. Intrepid slowed, but not as soon as Conrad wanted. He saw the surveyor crater drift past and said, Gosh, I flew by it. Conrad looked out to his left, just beyond the crater's northwest rim, and saw where he wanted to land, a smooth area between surveyor crater and head crater. Piloting a lunar module above the moon was a bit like flying a helicopter. You had to tilt it in order to change direction. With the helicopter, you were redirecting the thrust of the rotors. With the lunar module, it was the rocket engine. Conrad banked Intrepid hard to the left. The craft responded with the same sluggishness as the lunar landing training vehicle at Ellington. Bean, who had never flown the landing trainer, was surprised to see the eight ball in front of him tilt so sharply. He wondered what Conrad was doing. He said in a calm Texas drawl, Hey, you're really maneuvering around. Yep, Conrad answered, too busy to say anything more. Conrad knew the lander was flying just the way it was supposed to because lunar gravity pulled only one-sixth as hard as Earth's. Intrepid had to tilt six times as far to make the same change. He had practiced this many times on Earth with the training craft, something Bean had never flown. It wasn't a task that came naturally, but by the time Conrad and his crew left Earth, it had become ingrained. Come on down, Pete, Bean coached, his eye on the rate of descent gauge. Bean knew that Conrad must not descend too slowly while they were up this high. It would cost too much fuel. 200 feet, coming down at 3, Bean said. Need to come on down. 400. This is 66 feet. Right. D66. Okay. Yeah, got to get over here. 330 right. feet, coming down at 4. Got 11%. Just loads again. 300 feet, coming down at 5. Still almost 200 feet up, Conrad brought Intrepid into a slow vertical descent. Come on down, Bean coached. This was a balancing act. Descend too slowly and they risk running out of fuel. Too fast and the lunar module would not be able to slow to a safe landing. Okay, Conrad answered. In the simulator, he had always waited until they were down to 100 feet or so before arresting the last bit of forward speed and starting the final vertical descent but some instinct now prompted him to level off early. It was the best decision he made, because within moments, his view of the surface began to blur. Intrepid was kicking up a tremendous amount of dust, far more than the Apollo 11 movies had suggested. The dust shot away from him in bright streaks, rushing to the horizon. 96 feet, coming down at 6, slow down the descent rate, Beam called urgently. The dust cloud thickened, Conrad could see nothing but streaks, with a few rocks sticking up here and there. He had no idea whether there were any craters directly underneath him, but he would have to take his chances. 190 feet. Come on down. 180 feet. 9%. You're looking good. Gonna get some dust before long. 130 feet. 124 feet, Pete. 120 feet coming down at 6. You got 9%. 8%. You're looking okay. 96 feet coming down at 6. Slow down the descent rate. Looking real good, said Bean, his eyes glued to the gauges. 
fifty feet coming down, watch for the dust. Bean didn't see the dust storm already raging outside his window. On the airless moon, instead of billowing up around the lander, the dust particles went shooting away in all directions, creating something that resembled a fast-moving ground fog. It was crucial to touch down while descending vertically, or else risk tipping over. But this veil of speeding dust created the illusion that the lander was drifting backwards. Conrad's eyes flicked back and forth between the window and the instruments. It was absolutely the worst way to fly, with his attention split, but he had no choice. The gauge that was supposed to display lateral motion seemed to be broken, forcing him to look outside to make sure he wasn't drifting sideways, or even worse, backwards. Pete had to fight every instinct telling him to nudge the stick forward in response, but there were boulders poking up through the dust. Conrad used them as signposts to gauge his motion. Conrad had 20 years worth of flying experience. Right now, he needed every bit of it. Still, intrepid crept downward. 80 feet, 80 feet coming down at 4. You're looking good. 70 feet. Looking real good. 63 feet. 60 feet coming down at 3. 50 feet coming down. Watch for the dust. Now, 46. Low level. 42 feet, coming down at 3. Coming down at 2, okay. Start the clock. 42 feet, coming down at 2. 40 coming down at 2. Looking good. Watch the dust. 30 feet. You've got plenty of gas. Hang in there. Plenty of gas, said Bean. If you consider less than a minute's worth of descent fuel plenty. And now, from a quarter million miles away, came a warning. 30 seconds. Half a minute of fuel remaining. On Earth, Bean knew a pilot with only 30 seconds worth of fuel in the tanks would be justifiably panicked. But it was normal for the final moments of a lunar landing. Bean told Houston, he's got it made. 31, 32, 30 feet. Coming down at 2 feet, you got plenty of gas, plenty of gas, bitch. Hang in there. 30 seconds. 18 feet, coming down at 2. Bean knew they were close now. In his scans of the instrument panel, he began to include a blue light labeled Lunar Contact. Suddenly, he saw it come on. One of the three metal probes attached to the landing gear had touched the moon. Contact light, he said. Immediately, Conrad shut down Intrepid's rocket engine, and the craft fell to the ground with a firm thump. He's got it made. Come on in there. 24 feet. Contact light. Roger. Copy contact. Drawn. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Conrad had logged a hundred seconds of stick time, the only real flying he would get on Apollo 12. But they had required every ounce of experience from 20 years of piloting. For several long seconds, Bean had to keep his mind on the post-landing checklist as he and Conrad threw switches and closed valves. Then he reached out his gloved hand and clapped his commander on the shoulder. Great landing, Pete. Outstanding, man. Conrad had landed on target. He was sure of that. We're in hot shape, Houston, Conrad exulted. We're in real good shape. They were on the moon, but would they stay there? If anything had been broken during the landing, a propellant line, for example, Conrad and Bean would have to lift off immediately for an emergency rendezvous. In Houston and on board Intrepid, all eyes scanned the health of each of the lander's systems and made their recommendation. The mission could continue. Okay. I'll cycle these valves. You got your descent engine command override off. Yep. Okie dokie. I'll cycle the main shutoff valve. Okay. Front seat closed. You get both brakes closed, The brakes are closed. Good landing. P. Outstanding. Man. Master arm on. Beautiful. He's got set. Fire. Okay, I'll smoke over the acid. Ah, the acid helium looks okay. Okay, descent rag warning light. Don't worry about it. Acid extendables look good. O2H2O. The book turned over. Okay, we're in hot shape, Houston. We're in real good shape. Roger, mate. Engine stop, you pushed it. Yep, bro. Both control, both auto. Both auto. Descent engine command override off. Off. 
Agent arm off. Off. I got the 413 in and cycled the parker valve. Okay. Thruster ISO valves are done. Main shutoff's done. You bent it. Master arm on. Master arm, you turned it off. Master arm is off. Okay. Just watch the system. Stand by. Okay. Man, oh man, Houston, I'll tell you, I, I think we're in a place that's a lot dustier than Neil's. The good thing we had a simulator, because that was an high FI landing. Roger, Pete. I was high, Al. Yeah, I, I was you, I know it. Holy crap, man, it's beautiful out here. It sure is. It's something else. Then they heard, hello, Intrepid. It was Dick Gordon coming to them through static. Congratulations from Yankee Clipper. Thank you, sir. We will see you in 32 hours. Okay, Gordon said. Have a ball. We flew by. All right, Jeffrey. All right, Jeffrey. All right, Jeffrey. How are you? That was a highly interrupted, detailed account of the Apollo 12 lunar landing. As promised, I will now replay the entire landing started at 50,000 feet all the way down to the moon without interruption. 10, 9, 8, we have all 8, 7, 6, 5, four. row. I have it. Better start. 3, 4, Five. Descent engine command override on. Okay, hey, throttle up to 26. Yep. Copy, yeah. throttle on. Can't hardly hear you for some reason. Okay. Get it by for a throttle up, Houston. See, it looks good. Throttle up. Everybody feels good. Roger, Pete. Up. Copy, throttle up. This is looking good, Pete. All righty. Medium looks good. Regulators look good here. Okay, standing by for one minute hack. Okay. Getting a little RCS activity, not too much. Mark, one minute. 5208 minus 20. 48,000. Release. Looks good. Intrepid Houston, now 69 plus 0, 4, 2, 0, 0. Over. Roger, copy. Plus 0, 4, Two zero zero. That's affirmative. Twenty one sixty nine. Intrepid Houston, go for enter. It's in, babe. Intrepid Houston, looking good at two. Okay. Things and are hanging in. Good here. Roger, Miss Finn agrees with things and eggs. Very good, very good. Feels good to be standing up in the G field again. Roger. Okay, two minutes and thirty seconds. Forty two seventy six minus 53 and 44,700. Looks good. Look, smoking right down there. Look at RCS. Looks good, Pete. Am I? We've been given the ED bats today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't forget the ED bats today. There you go. Three minutes. About 44 feet per second fast, about 6 feet per second low on H side, and about 100 feet low on altitude. Looking good. 
Intrepid Houston, Roger, you're looking good at three. Okay, Houston. I have an altitude light out and a velocity light out. Roger. I'm showing minus 918, minus 1,000. Looks good. How's it look to you, Houston? Roger. It looks good. Recommend you incorporate it. No sooner said than done. Let me know when it converges. I'm going back to my normal displays. Okay, Pete. Intrepid Houston, you're go at four and go past five. Roger, copy ED VAPS, go. Roger, here comes. Looking good, looking good. Folks, I'm holding right in there. Super Crit hangs at 1100 or 12. All the time. Okay, smoke over all the gigs. Check out everything. RCS looks good. Electrics look good. Partial pressure CO2 is as usual zero. <laughs> Got a couple of good winners in these two spacecraft. Okay, we're at a 35,000. Roger, Pete. On that one. Yeah, I get a fair amount of getting a fair amount of RCS firing more than I think I should. But uh, how's the gimbal? What you guys using? They're looking good, Pete. Okay. There's a five-minute hack, Al. Okay. Boy, it's really giving her a heck on the RCS. That must be the radar update. When I did the AGS and update, it might need it. Hmm. 23 plus. But it really is banging it around, isn't it? Intrepid Houston, throttle down at 6 plus 2-2. Two two. We got her 6 plus 2-2. Two two. Two two. This gave you a little AGS update. Good. According to this here computer, it's right on the money. Better turn that sequence camera on in a moment. Okay. 6 plus 2-2 two two for throttle down, huh? Yeah. Okay. Down, I'm going to put on the camera. How's that strike you? There's Ben Trumpet Houston. You're looking good at six. Okay, standing by for a throttle down. Things in action. Do you agree? Okay. Twenty-three. Let's give it another update. Throttle down. Throttle down. Six plus two three. Roger. Four zero. Four zero. Give him another AGS update. All right. Four. I just barely see the horizon, but uh, maybe it's really giving us a kazoozy with the RCS, isn't it? There is. Why don't I go ahead and put that camera on you? All right, why don't you? Run it. Seven minutes. 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 Seven Seven minutes. 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 Seven Okay, we're out of 19,000 feet. I got some kind of a horizon out there. I got some craters, too, but I don't know where I am yet. 7.30. The smoke over the numbers is 7.30. Okay, 7.30, 11.53. Up to bed. And it's 1.35. We're descending a little faster than normal. And we're a little bit low. Good luck. Very good. 160 feet a second, huh? Okay. 23. We'll be there in a minute. minute. Number. Hammer's running. Intrepid Houston, you're looking good at eight. Okay, passing 12,000 feet. 
Going to take you to Houston. Roger. Spring loaded to go grab that slider. Right you're out of 10,000 feet. Hook up your lanyard. Okay. In a buy for P64. Okay. I'm trying to cheat and look out there. I think I see my crater. Hey, baby. I'm not sure. Coming through seven. Look at P60, P64, P. P64. That said, there's LPD. Roger, copy P64. Okay, thousand updates. Hey, there it is. There it is. Son of a gun, right down the middle of the road. Outstanding. 42 degrees, Pete. Hey, it's starting right from 42. the center of the crater. Hey, look out there. I can't believe it. Amazing. Fantastic. 42 degrees, Pete. Just keep talking. Slide it in. Softly. 42. We're passing 3,500. Coming down at about 99 feet a second. You're looking good. Got 15% fuel. I'll reset my watch. Okay. Houston, go for landing. Over one. I just want LPD to the right a little. Roger, okay, Roger. Roger. 40 degrees, LPD. That's so fantastic, I can't believe it. You're at 2,000 feet. How far? The boys on the ground do okay. 1,800 feet up, 39 degrees. You got 94 seconds of LP, LPD time left. Okay, I want to move forward a little bit. 38. 38 degrees, 36 degrees. You're 1,200 feet, Pete. Okay, 1,000 feet coming down at 30. You're looking good. Got 14% fuel. Looks good out there, babe. Looks good. 32 degrees. You're at 800 feet. 33 degrees. You're at 680 feet. 33 degrees. 600 feet. Antenna's okay. Thanks. 35 degrees, 530 feet, 530, 471. You are all right. 426. I got it. 400. You're at 366 feet. Thanks. Right. 366. Okay. Yeah, you're I got to get over here. 330 right. feet coming down at 4. Got 11%. Got loads of gas. 300 feet coming down at 5. Hey, look at that crater right where it's supposed to be. Hey, you're beautiful. 10%. 257 feet coming down at 5. 240 coming down at 5. Hey, you're really maneuvering around. Yeah. Come on down, Pete. Okay. 10% fuel. 200 feet coming down at 3. You need to come on down. Okay. 190 feet. Come on down. 180 feet. 9%. You're looking good. Going to get some dust before long. 130 feet. 124 feet, Pete. 120 feet coming down at 6. You got 9%. 8%. You're looking okay. 96 feet coming down at 6. Slow down the descent rate. 80 feet. 80 feet coming down at 4. You're looking good. 70 feet. Looking real good. 63 feet. 60 feet coming down at 3. 50 feet coming down. Watch for the dust. Now, 46. Low level. 42 feet coming down at 3. Coming down at 2. Okay. Start the clock. 42 feet coming down at 2. 40 coming down at 2. Looking good. Watch the dust. 31. 32. 30 feet. Coming down at 2 feet. You got plenty of gas. Plenty of gas, dude. Hang in there. 30 seconds. 18 feet coming down at 2. He's got it made. Come on in there. 24 feet. Contact light. Roger. Copy contact. Tron. Pro. Yeah, pro. Okay. Engine storm off. Okay. I'll cycle these valves. You got your descent engine command override off. Yep. Okay, that's the cycle the main shutoff valve. Okay. Bus seat closed. We get both ready for it, babe. The rigs are closed. Good landing. P. Outstanding, man. Answer arm on. Beautiful. Salutations from Southern Alabama. This is Michael Annis, your host, and I wanted to say thanks for listening to episode number 246 of the Space Rocket History Podcast, 
entitled Apollo 12 Pinpoint Landing Part 2 Right Down the Middle of the Road. Hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a pleasure to bring it to you. I want to give a big shout out to all my longtime listeners. Thanks for staying subscribed and extend a warm welcome to my new listeners. I am glad you're here. Today, we salute my Rocket Emoji donors. These donors have donated for at least two years in a row and receive a Rocket Emoji next to their name on the donors list. Thanks, Rocket Emoji donors, for your continued support. Had several afterthoughts about this week's episode. First, I want to recognize my sources. A Man on the Moon by Andrew Chaikin. Failure is Not an Option by Gene Krantz. Rocket Man by Nancy Conrad. The Apollo 12 Flight Journal. And Apollo, an Eyewitness Account by Alan Bean. Well, since we last spoke, we had an anniversary here with the podcast. It's now five years old. And we are closing in on another milestone in downloads. But we will do all the celebrating and, of course, the Tang ceremony when we reach 250 episodes, which should be in just about four weeks or so, something like that. Well, NASA can calculate a pinpoint landing. And Pete may have been more surprised than anyone that that they could hit it so closely. (laughs) It was so close that Intrepid was going to land in the Surveyor Crater if Pete did not make an adjustment, which he did do. So my hat is off to Mission Control and the guys in the trench that could hit a landing so precisely. Do you think Pete got a little excited about finding his landing site? Right down the middle of the road, he said. That was a genuine reaction of someone who worried about something for a long time, and the results turned out to be better than expected. I absolutely love Pete's excitement and the landing. An excellent job. And of course, Bino coaching him up on the landing. Plenty of gas, plenty of gas, come on down. The student instructing the teacher. What a great team they made. Now, 30 seconds doesn't seem like a lot of fuel, but I think that was a bigger margin than Apollo 11 had. You, I guess you get that contact light from the probes hanging off the foot pads, and then you switch the engine off and let it drop. Pretty much that's what they did. All right, I hope you enjoyed that episode, folks. I really did. I have posted some pictures and the audio for this episode on my homepage, spacerockethistory.com. Hope you check that out. I was pleased to receive seven new donations to support the podcast over the past week. Andy M. donated at the Apollo level and earned his moon emoji. Christian M. donated at the Mercury level. Dustin F. from Virginia donated at the Mercury level. Christian R. increased his pledge on Patreon to the Apollo level. Roger D. pledged on Patreon at the Mercury level. JT. pledged on Patreon at the Vostok level. Kelsey M. pledged on Patreon at the Vostok level. Okay, we lost two Patreons over the uh, change in month from February to March, and we gained one, so our total is now at 159 Patreon donors with a goal of reaching 218 for 2018. And our overall donors have now reached 209 with a goal of reaching... 418 in 2018. For those of you who are enjoying the content provided here and have not donated in 2018, please consider supporting the podcast if you are financially able. Keep in mind, Space Rocket History is entirely listener-funded. I depend upon your financial support to keep the podcast going. To support the podcast, go to the homepage, spacerockethistory.com, click on the orange Donate button or the Patreon link. All donors are rewarded with their name on the donors page at the level they chose to donate at. For those of you who have already donated for 2018, I certainly appreciate it. I have an item to give away this week. It is the official Space Rocket History logo vinyl refrigerator magnet. It has a picture of the official SRH logo with the rockets. To select the winner, Mrs. SRH gave every 2018 donor a number. She put the range in Google's random number generator and got the number for Justin Morrill. Justin Morrill, if you would email me, mike at spacerockethistory.com, and tell me your address, 
I will mail this out to you. I was pleased to see the podcast received several new five-star ratings on iTunes over the past few weeks, and I want to sincerely thank those who gave the podcast the all-important five-star rating and the very kind reviews. Thank you so much. Okay, that's all I have for this week. Hope to have episode 247 posted by next Thursday. So long for now.